Yo, what is up guys? It is Archimedes Eisen here, back at it again with part 2 on what if Naruto was Gojo's reincarnation. Now, uh, basically I will not be linking Dank God in the description since I did make this thumbnail. So I basically, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, I left off after the Land of the Waves arc and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to the... Um, end of naruto itself like them I mean, this is the finale hopefully like i can definitely get through the chunin exams and sus other events like that and shippuden so basically without further ado guys let's get straight into this what if now we resume this what if after team seven have came back from the land of the waves now team seven will turn in their mission reports and they would have uh, you know after a week of recuperating and just chilling in general naruto would have been training a little just like training but training is training so basically kakashi would have went um you know like kakashi's dog would have basically uh went up to the door and he basically knocked on the door don't ask how he knocked on the door but he knocked on the door now naruto would get up uh, put on his Jujutsu Kaisen uniform and he would open the door now once he would see the door He would like open it and see the dog there He would know that this is Kakashi summoning and basically Paku would tell him to meet um, Meet him at training ground 7 or meet Kakashi at training ground 7 before Paku would disappear back to the summoning role the summoning world so basically Naruto would put his hands together in the signal and the sign like before disappearing using the Jujutsu Kaisen way of moving at fast speeds. So once Naruto would arrive at, you know, the training ground, he would get there and Sasuke and Sakura and Kakashi would already basically be waiting. And once they would, you know, already be there and Naruto just, you know, he just arrived. Um, Kakashi would explain to them that, you know, the tuning exams are coming up and Naruto would be like, the fuck is that? <laughs> What's tuning exams? I mean, so does, uh, so does Sakura. Sasuke kind of has an idea of what it is, but you know, he's still you know curious what they'd be doing since they change every year. So Kakashi would explain to them that, uh, they're, you know, ninjas from the sound village the rain village the sand village will be coming over here and you'll be participating in a you know term tournament to try you know get top marks and see if you're qualified to become tuning and everyone would be quite excited you know it was only been a month since they become ninjas and they already have the chance of getting a, a rank up and you know naruto is quite excited by this you know maybe if he does extra good he might like get an extra rank up you know might become joining early but you know we know how gojo is over like overreaching so he likes to reach a lot in metaphorical sense of course <laughs> not in a physical sense that would kind of be sus but basically kakashi would get out in like a notebook and he would you know show them the training regimen they'll be doing for the next week so for the next week they would just be doing training and like Probably the next week after, it was just like in the evening, they just finished their training around 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, of course. And uh, they were like, you know, walking through the village and uh, they would have seen, you know, Naruto would have recognized Konohamaru from his days of just like messing around. I mean, before he became ninja. So he would see, you know, Konohamaru bump into somebody and this would, you know, um, lay out the events for, you know, Konkuro, kind of like, uh, messing around with uh konohamaru i don't know how to describe it but he basically gets pissed that konohamaru bumped into him but naruto would just like appear behind him like have like that gojo smile you know how gojo is and you kind of laugh about it and he would just grab his arm you know crush it just easily and he would just kind of like move it out the way before um you know walking konohamaru and konohamaru kind of like walked behind them now Gara would kind of like uh, be like seen in the trees like he would show himself and like <laughs> once he would like get a good look at Gara, they would kind of have like a stare off before Gara would ask for their names and uh, basically he would also introduce himself after that and pretty much he would look towards Sasuke and Naruto and ask them for their names. Naruto would say I'm Naruto Uzumaki. I'm the strongest in the village it was a very cocky uh, statement but you know you know it is what it is i don't know why i just slammed my desk 
natural habit, I guess, and pretty much Gara would look towards Sasuke, and he would ask for his name. Now, <laughs> Sasuke would... <laughs> Alrighty, I am back, uh, good old Yami, and I talked, I guess, I don't know, um, but uh, yeah. Um, so basically, after Gara would get the names of Naruto and Sasuke, they would end their convo right there, and Naruto would head back home. Now, once Naruto would get home, he would eat some ramen before putting on his like clothes to go to bed, and he would go to bed. So the next day, he would get up, put on his like um, he would put on the outfit that Gojo was wearing against Toji. It was like uh, I don't know, it just looked drippy in that panel. Where he says like I am the only honored one in the heavens and earth. And that that outfit was just drippy. So yeah, <laughs> but it's like the zoo, I think. Yeah, it's like a never mind. I, I I'm at, I'm on a tangent right right now. I can't even talk now. So basically, Naruto would get up, put on that outfit, and he would put on his sunglasses. He didn't want really, he didn't really want to wear the blindfold. Who knows? Somebody might figure out his ability. So sunglasses it is. So he would um, head downstairs and he would be like walking to Sasuke's house. Now he would knock on Sasuke's door, Sasuke would answer, they would head over to Sakura's house, Sakura would come, and then they would. <laughs> no way, I just got the, just got the weirdest thought ever. <laughs> Never mind. But Team 7 would head over to um, the academy since that's where the training exams were taking place, or at least the first part. So once Team Seven would arrive at the you know the academy, they would have a little talk with um, Kakashi his Sensei, and uh, he would you know, give him a few words of motivation. They just spent the last week just training, so you know Sakura learned more of her elemental jutsu like earth and water. Honestly, I think uh, she also would have learned fire since in the light novel I think she has fire style, but I'm not sure. I haven't actually read the light novel, but I know she does have it. And Sasuke would have learned more to enhance his Sharingan, which would have made him unlock his two Tomoe Sharingan, or master it at that point. And Naruto would have just been Naruto, OP. <laughs> but basically, Team 7 would head inside, uh, like further into the academy. And basically, Naruto would start observing the room. Now, something just didn't feel off about this certain area. So there was a door, and pretty much he would see two guards, and a Genshu to blocking, like, the part of the door where it says like which number of the door it is basically signifying which room it is and basically they're this was the room they're supposed to go in but the gantry is supposed to hide the fact that it's not that room so they're basically going around in a goose chase so he would just whisper to their team and it was he didn't like it was kind of unheard but the, the, only the team heard what he said so basically he just told his team let's go inside there since it's a genjutsu just kind of short and simple so nobody else hears it. So Team 7 would hand inside the room and they would sit down. Now they would kind of just sit down quickly, don't start any conversations with anyone. They don't want to rise any tensions like they did in canon. <laughs> now it's literally like almost starting a fight with everyone. <laughs> but basically, um they would sit down and they would just wait for the um, you know the teacher or the main person like um I guess uh doing this uh, portion of the exam. But uh, in the middle of this, they would have this conversation with this guy called Kabuto. And, you know, he would give them information on other ninjas. And, you know, they, they couldn't say no to that information, information, you know. They need to know about uh, the strong people so they can know to watch out or prepare for a fight. So they would basically find that information on Gara, Rock Lee, and Orochimaru. So, yeah. After, you know, getting information from Kabuto, uh, basically EBQ would walk in. And those two ninjas would start handing out the exams and EBQ would explain to them that hey uh, you'll be doing this exams uh, if you caught if you're caught cheating you're disqualified and you know let's get to it so basically Naruto would just pass this exam I don't really see why it's hard to do the exam I'm, I don't know I didn't really see the exact questions I don't or maybe I, they did show the exact question but I really don't remember so Naruto would ace the test and uh, EBQ would announce the 10th question and pretty much uh, he would start to explain, hey, you could leave now and you could be barred from the exam just for this year and just come back next year after you train the whole year, you'll, you'll probably have higher chance of passing. But if you get the question wrong now, 
you'll be uh, pretty much prohibited from participating in the Trinity exams in any village for the rest of your life. Now, all the all the low-ranking ninjas that just got Genin, and they're they're kind of like father. All right, no no offense. You can go MC your other show, okay? You're not the MC, okay? So they would all leave, and uh, yeah, EBQ would announce that there was no tenth question, and they all pass. And Naruto would have just been sitting there, you know, smiling in confidence because he knew, um, like, EBQ's mind tricks. So, basically, a few seconds, um, you know, EBQ would announce what we'll be having next. But before he can even get into it, like, someone would kick down the door and the person would be revealed as Anko Midorashi. I think I said that right, I think. And uh, Anko would explain to them, you know, me here at Training Ground 44. I think that's where the force of death is training ground 44 and you know everyone else would head to the training ground and naruto would have just used his teleportation jutsu uh, i think gojo does it like in the gojo versus sakuna fight he used uh, a teleportation jutsu so i mean technique <laughs> and basically naruto should be able to do this as well so naruto would teleport his team including himself of course to the training ground and Everyone else would come maybe a few minutes later and Anka would start to explain to them what they'll be doing today. So she'll explain that, hey, this is the force of death. Uh, the second part of the Juna exams is I'm going to give you one scroll. You'll either get a heaven or earth scroll. So you have to get the opposite scroll. So if you get the earth scroll, you have to get the heaven scroll. Or if you have the heaven scroll, you get the earth scroll. She would then hand out all the waivers because killing is allowed. She would pretty much say with a creepy smile. Now... After this, everyone would you know sign their um, their forms before basically oh just like in canon, Anka would throw the kunai at Naruto, but Naruto would just keep standing there, and the kunai for some reason would stop mid air and it would then fall to the ground. Now Naruto would then pick up the kunai and use like a special teleportation technique to teleport it back to her hand, and you know, he would say you know you drop something, and Anka would kind of get a little annoyed, but. No, she just like ignored it. So basically, Anka would announce the start of the second portion of the Chinan exams, and everyone would run in. Now Naruto and his team have the Heaven Scroll, so now all they need is the Earth Scroll. So Naruto, after observing everyone, he knows who has the Earth Scroll, and he basically marked them with a bit of his cursed energy, so he can teleport there whenever he wants. So yeah, he would send the team about fodder. You know, that's all they need to know. Then pretty much he would teleport there, uh, appear beh uh, behind them. He would then pretty much put his hands together before doing the cur uh, maximum curse output red. I know that's a little too far on father, but it is what it is. He would then pretty much use it and this would pretty much take off their heads. Like that's a little too far, right? Archimedes eyes and taking off their heads. I mean, their father. So it is what it is. So he would then bend down, go through someone's uh, kunai pouch and get the scroll before appearing behind their team and basically holding the scroll in the air, showing that he has received it. Now he would then toss it towards Sasuke. Sasuke would show a nod of gratitude. He is still somewhat emo, but don't worry bro. He'll be chill like adult Sasuke at the end of this series, but it won't be bored, so it'll be Shippuden. So don't worry, Archimedes Aizen will get you Sasuke back to normal. I'm just kidding. But basically, Team 7 would head towards the tower. Now, in the middle of this destination, Naruto would say, you know, I gotta, I gotta piss, you know? Him being Gojo's reincarnation doesn't mean his bladder is different. He still needs to go. <laughs> so, basically, he would be in the middle of, you know, doing his business. And uh, he, he would be urinating. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He wouldn't. I mean, he would. Okay. So, a uh, little, like, he would sense, um, a, like, um, something coming behind him. Now he would like look um, like he would use his six eyes to basically see that there's a snake coming behind him. So he would turn around, put his hands together and use purple to basically erase the snake into nothing. It's just void and pretty much uh, like there would be smoke and then uh, you would start to hear a little bit of laughter and clapping. And once the smoke is clear, you would see this uh, weird lady, the grass ninja lady clapping her hands. And she would pretty much say, you know, hey, that's a good jutsu. But Naruto wasn't really, dece you know, deceived by this look. So he would then appear behind uh, this said green, uh, <laughs> the grass ninja lady. And she, you know, he would grab her head and rip it off. 
Now this would cause Orochimaru in disguise to basically regurgitate himself. So he would go back to normal and Naruto would say, I knew you were like Orochimaru. So you're not gonna leave this forest, you know, alive. So he would then um, pretty much have his like, you know how Jojo characters, when they're about to use their stand, they get this aura. That's kind of like what Naruto just did. So Naruto would gain like his own version of his aura and he would, you know, get ready to fight. So Arochimaru just knowing that he just needs to get hit the curse mark on Sasuke, but he's still kind of intrigued by Naruto's abilities. So he'd run towards Naruto, throw a punch, and the punch would stop. So uh, Naruto, out of curiosity or you know just funness, he wants to be fun. He would put his hand out and he would say, you know, come on, you know, sh I don't know what the ch like the what he said in Japanese. I think it was like uda uda, uda uda, and pretty much. You know, Orochimaru not sending, sensing any, um, uh, like, intent. He would put his hand there, and he would see, you know, Naruto would say, See, your hand doesn't, like, even reach me. You know, your hand doesn't, like, stop. It slows down, because there, you can't, you can't, there's an infinite amount of fractions between zero and one, so you can't actually reach me. So, basically, he would then turn off Limitless, grab his hand, then pretty much uh, like punch him into the stomach, kind of like how Gojo did to Jogo, and Orochimaru would just pretty much get split in half. Like that punch was just too hard for him, too deadly, like seven deadly sins. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Naruto would basically cause Orochimaru to basically turn into snakes and you know head out of there. So once um, Orochimaru would escape, he would pretty much, uh, you know, Orochimaru would escape. Uh, team 7 would head towards the, um, the tower. And once they would get there, uh, he would, you know, Naruto would turn in the scrolls after they would open the scrolls. He would basically, they would reach there and Uruka would congratulate them. They they literally only passed the exam after maybe 20, 25 minutes. Like that fight was not long. And just letting so you know, Sasuke did not get the curse mark. So yeah, that's good. After they would basically pass that portion, they would spend the next five days maybe just chilling. And, you know, Naruto would, you know, didn't really feel the need to train. You know, he's just strong enough. You know, he, he's fine. So, the premier, the preliminary uh, tournament would start. And pretty much all the fights would go the same. So, Naruto versus Kiba. Now, once the fight would start, Naruto would pretty much see Kiba try to do his Man Beast transformation. And he would try to hit Naruto, but he would literally just let him do it. It wouldn't even work. Due to the high speed that momentum of Kiba's going, and due to Limitless, that just doesn't work out for him. So when he tries to hit Naruto, he literally gets sent back flying into the wall, basically knocking himself out. Now, once that fight ends, Sakura versus Eno, that would go completely different. Like, Sakura would basically win the fight. So due to her you know, training in this timeline. So after that fight would happen, Sasuke versus Yoroi would also go completely different. Number one, Sasuke did not get the curse mark, so he's not limited by the curse mark, and he can actually use the you know Sharingan. So Sasuke would easily win that battle. That would be good reps for Yoroi. He's he's sleeping with the other father, father, father. I almost said father. I mean father. So after Naruto would beat, uh, I'm sorry, Sasuke would beat Yoroi, uh, we'll go on basically where Hiruzen would explain to them that they have one month to train. So basically after everyone would leave or the, the people would leave, they would announce the fights, Naruto versus Neji, Sasuke versus Gara, Sakura versus uh, Dosu, Shikamaru versus uh, Tamari, and Shino versus uh, Konkuro. Everyone would then leave and they would start the training arc. Now Naruto would head up with his uh, team 7 and they would basically spend the next month training along with, with Kakashi's help. Now Sakura would train and more. Uh, she would like, you know, head up with Kuro and I and she would uh, ask her to basically teach her how to, you know, use Genjutsu. Sasuke would train with Kakashi. Uh, and basically Naruto would help you know, Sasuke since he feels like Sasuke is probably the only person like once he reaches his full potential he's the only person who can actually get past Limitless with a uh, technique like 
for some reason, he can see the future part of Sasuke. It's just like a teacher's thing. So he would see that Sasuke, for some reason, gets an ability, which is pretty OP. He doesn't know what the ability is, but he knows he's going to be quite strong. So we all know this is Amaterasu. Because I always thought maybe Amaterasu can burn through Limitless, since it burns things to ashes. So never mind, though. Um, so we'll do a one-month time skip. Naruto would have mastered his domain expansion and you know would have can use it multiple times a day he would have learned to basically keep up his limitless every time of the day he would have put reverse curse technique into his brain so his brain is always like fresh he can think anytime he's just his iq is at the highest and he would have learned more martial arts and yeah he was just mainly focusing on gojo's abilities rather than the chakra in the area so after the one month time skip Naruto would get on the Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen outfit and he would head towards the arena with Sasuke and Sakura. Now once everyone would get in the arena, Sasuke and this time would not be late, so that's very good. So basically, uh, before the fight would commence, um, you know, the, the, <laughs> like the proctor would start to explain uh, whose fights are going first. So Naruto versus Neji are going first and everyone else are going up to the stance. So, before the fight would start, Naruto would kind of be pissed about what Neji did to Hinata. He just did not like that. So, basically what he would do is he would kind of put a little more cursed energy. You know, he held him back. So, right when the fight starts, Naruto would take off his headband, his blindfold, and he would just, like, this would kind of show that he's going all out. Now, everyone in the stands would kind of be surprised by Naruto's, like, blue eyes. It's not like normal Naruto's blue eyes. This is blue eyes, blue eyes. Kind of like, never mind, I was about to say a dark joke. But basically, Naruto would put his hands together and make like a, a flame attack, and he would send it towards Neji. Now, Neji would then use the, the palm rotation, and this is exactly what Naruto wanted to, uh, Neji to do. So he would appear behind Neji before using red, and this would completely erase the um, palm rotation. It would kind of like push it back. After this, he would use blue and then basically suck the palm rotation into a vortex. Now, after that would happen, he would rush towards Neji before punching him in the face, sending him into the wall on the other side, leaving a crater. Now, after this, he would walk up to the crater, grab him by the head. He would start smacking him against the wall just over and over. And after this, he pretty much grab him by the neck and then slam him back on the ground, basically leaving an imprint into the ground. So that, you know, basically Neji would get fatherized. Now, Naruto would be, you know, commenced a winner and the next round would start. So Sakura and you know Dosu would not happen since Dosu has been killed. So Sakura would then be pretty much sent to the next round. The next fight would then be Shikamaru versus uh, Tamari. And Naruto would see that Shikamaru's kind of be lazy. And he doesn't like to be lazy. He likes to be lively, you know, like Gojo. So he would grab Neji. I mean, sorry, not Neji. So he would grab Shikamaru and just throw him into the ring, just like in canon. And in the middle like when Shikamaru was falling he would say so much curses at Naruto not really he didn't really mean it but it's kind of just like a comical moment so the fight with Shikamaru and Tamari would go the same with um, Shikamaru basically forfeiting and Tamari winning so the next fight would then be Sasuke versus Kara now understand everyone was waiting for the site waiting for this fight this was the Uchiha prodigy fighting the son of the Kaze Kage and the One Tails Jinshuriki. So he can definitely, like, they're really hoping for some entertainment here. So Sasuke would get down and Naruto would whisper something into his ear. And, you know, Sasuke would remember something from his, like, uh, Jinshuriki classes. Now, if you guys are wondering, the fuck is that? So in the one month time scheme, Naruto would have taught him a technique to deal with Jinshuriki that are going on a rampage. Uh, so he would have taught him the five prong seal. So it would have so anytime like in their fight Gara goes on a rampage, he, Sasuke completely can just shut him up. So Sasuke would go down the ring and pretty much um, you know the fight would start. So in the first part, Sasuke is trying his best to go into a Taiji to try to use the same techniques that uh, Lee used in the fight with Lee versus Gara. So that would work be working for him, but Gara would start to use his defense and Sasuke realized there's only one way out of this. So he would run back onto the wall, like using chakra into his feet to stay on the wall. He would run through a few hand signs before using the Chidori. Now, 
a huge, you know, a, like a lightning ball would form on his hand. It would inf inc like um, envelop his hand and just lightning. He would then grab his, like his left arm would grab the top of his, like near the elbow, just to keep it stabilized and would run towards Gara. Now Gara would be in that little circle running through about a thousand hand signs, uh, trying to transform, I think. So he would, you know, Sasuke would run through and pretty much jab the, the Chidori through the sand and it would pierce uh, Gara through the shoulder. Now, after this Gara's uh, like protective dome would be broken, uh, Gara would look at his look at his shoulder and he would be like, "That's that's my blood, that's my blood," and he would just repeat this over and over. And pretty much Sasuke would realize he's about to go on a rampage. So he's like, nah, canon is not about to happen. I'm just kidding about that one. But he would appear behind uh, Gara, get his five fingers out and slam it into Gara's stomach. He would then tighten the seal, basically making an, uh, like just tightening the seal. It's not like making a new seal or something or using the eight tetragram seal. It's just tightening it up. And Gara would pretty much be knocked out by this. And, you know, Sasuke would then be commenced a winner. Now, Orochimaru from afar would be enraged by this. He doesn't have his most like is an ultimate weapon i mean he still has the resurrect dead people but right now this Garo is one of his main resources so he decided he'll start the attack without him so uh, flower petals would fall down and the attack would commence now naruto would see this and he would realize from afar that orochimaru is about to basically fight uh you know you know, <laughs> Hiruzen and the other Anbu that are guarding him. So he would then appear uh, before the like the barriers um, put up, and they would you know, he, like Hiruzen and uh, Naruto would have the fight with Orochimaru. So Naruto and Hiruzen would be facing off against Orochimaru, and Orochimaru would kind of be scared of Naruto, but he realizes he can just use a reanimation jutsu to bring back the Kage, and that's exactly what he would do. But uh, Hiruzen will warn, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Naruto, oh my god, I'm sputtering, splutter, <laughs> stuttering, uh, he, like, basically, he was in to warn Naruto that you should not let the fourth one go up, that might be the fourth Hokage, and Naruto would be like, you know, I ain't trying to fight my dad, so he would basically appear behind it, use purple as fast as he can, and he would destroy the, the coffin, so he was kind of mostly focused on that, so he couldn't destroy the other ones. So um, that, like those other coffins would open and uh, Hashirama and Tobiram would come out and they would kind of have their own introduction saying, you know, Saru, is that you? And, you know, basically Orochimaru would take over their control and it would kind of be like Hiruzen versus Orochimaru and Naruto versus uh, Hashirama and Tobirama. So Naruto would do it, like introduce himself, Naruto Uzumaki. So basically how the reanimations are is they can talk freely, but they're, they're moving against their will. So, Hashirama would be like, oh, from Mito's clan. Or, you know. And pretty much, Naruto would be like, yeah, from their clan. And Hashirama would be kind of, um, he would be kind of curious. So, he would want to see the chains. So, Naruto would then use the Adamantian chains. And it would wrap around Hashirama before Naruto would then get out his fist and fuse his whole fist with red. And then he would pretty much punch Hashirama's face off. Now, it would actually go flying off his shoulders, but the thing is, his head would start to regurgitate to his body, and he would just, you know, reanimation due to his pretty tough thing to handle. So Naruto remembered one of the sealing techniques from the Jujutsu Kaisen world, so he'd run through a few hand signs, and he would then pretty much, uh, like, uh, use a technique to then wrap, uh, basically use his own cursed energy to, uh, with his Uzumaki chains to wrap Hashirama up and try to seal him. Since he is an Uzumaki, it should not be too hard, and he's Gojo's reincarnation. So what happened is he would seal Hashirama away, using like a similar technique to what Geto used against um, Gojo. So, after Naruto would seal Hashirama away and basically send him back to the afterlife, he would be him versus Tobirama. And Naruto would just look at Tobirama before putting his um, hands together and using purple. Now this would be quite a big purple. The other purples he used, they were quite small, he wasn't trying, but this time he's infusing as much chakra as he can. So he would then send this at Hashi, like, sorry, my bad, Tobirama, and he would basically erase uh, you know, him from existence, sending him back to the afterlife. So there's nothing to like um, regenerate from. So that's how you beat the reanimations with purple. So after this, Naruto would be 
uh, seeing Orochimaru, and he's about to get sealed, but he's about to send that Kusanagi Blade. So he realized the only thing he can do is use Domain Expansion. So he put his uh, hand, he put the hand sign up for Domain Expansion, and then he would use Domain Expansion or Yorichi Tenkai, and then he would do Limitless Void. Now, once this would happen, uh, Naruto would then use the ability and pretty much um, keep Orochimaru in place. And yeah, that would be the end of Rochimaru and the end of this part. Yo, what is up guys? It is Archimedes Eisen here, back at it again with the finale. So basically, I kind of ended the last part short because I had to do something. So I just had to end it right there. But now I'm continuing that. So now I'm going to merge those two parts or this part and the other part together. It'll be one finale. So it should be around 50 minutes. I think that's I think that's pretty good, and who knows? Maybe I'll merge the first part and the second part, then make a movie special. So you get you guys seem to like movie specials. So yeah, without further ado, guys, let's get straight back to the what if. <laughs> so after Naruto would have pretty much uh, helped Hiruzen, you know, seal Orochimaru into the Shinigami, you know, Orochi, you know, Hiruzen would die. And pretty much Naruto would have been promoted to Jonin level. Uh, that was just would have been Hiruzen's last, not last words, but like something he wrote down just in case he did die. So yeah, he really acknowledged Naruto. And yeah. And Naruto would have been quite um, sad, I guess. So about maybe two days later, he, Naruto would receive a knock at the door. Now he'd walk up to the door and he would see Jiraiya, and you know he would look, you know walk out to him, start examining him, and then you know they have similar hair color. You know he likes people who have similar hair color to him, and you know he would ask for his name. This person would uh, would you know introduce himself as Jiraiya of the Sani, and Naruto would just start like fanboying, be like, "Oh, the Sani, the Sani, bro, bro, mad respect." Uh, you know, I like your books. All right, <laughs> and um, Dry be like, oh, you're you're a man of culture as well. And Naruto would be like, yes, yes, of course I am. Nah, I'm just kidding. But basically, Dry would ask Naruto to go with him to basically um get the fifth Hokage and bring her back since you are a newly attained Jonin and you know there's no one else I could trust. And Loruto would scratch his head and be like, ah, uh, I guess I will. Um, you know, and then Naruto would pack his stuff up after telling Jirai to wait for a few minutes. He would, you know, pack his stuff, um, you know, steal it into a scroll and put it into his kunai pouch or his pocket before heading out with Jirai. Now, before he would leave, he would tell Sasuke that uh, he has something, you know, um, waiting for him when you come back. It's going to be cool, you know. A way for you to get power in a sense it was pretty sasuke would start to get excited since he's seen you know naruto's power he knows that if naruto promises him power then that means he's gonna get power so naruto and jiraiya would head out the village and they'd head to that small village by the hotel now naruto would he head inside and jiraiya would tell him that he's off to do some research and naruto wouldn't really care so Naruto would just start to get settled down and start chilling, and he would hear, pretty much hear a knock at the door. Now Naruto being the fearless leader, he would go up to the door and open it. You know, kind of having his excited eye, excited smile, and showing his uh, like blindfold, like taking it off and waving excitedly. And then he would see like two people with red cl uh, in like black cloaks with red clouds. Now Naruto would be like, "Ooh, nice costumes." And pretty much Kisame would swing his like Samihade and it would go to basically, you know, like slice Naruto or absorb a chakra. It's not really a sword, but it is what it is. And then for some reason, the sword would just stop midway and Naruto would be like, come on, you're not allowed to bring weapons here. It's, it's a party, right? Then he would pretty much just raise his fist back for punching Kisame on like all the way to the other side of the hallway through the building. Now Itachi would then uh, Pedroshi realize this is what the Benga book was talking about. It's like a barrier that stops you from hitting it. So he would try something out. 
uh, he would stand there and his uh, his left eye would literally start to bleed. I'm sorry, his right eye would start to bleed before he would open it and it would be a different pattern. Naruto would pretty much be like, oh, is that the, is this a new evolution of the Sharingan I haven't heard about? And Itachi wouldn't say anything and pretty much Itachi would use Amaterasu. Now, the Amaterasu would head towards Naruto, and Naruto would kind of get a little scared. This is the technique he probably feared that Sasuke would have that could beat him. So, Naruto would then pretty much use blue and kind of suck the Amaterasu into a vortex. Now, after he pretty much dealt with the Amaterasu, he would, um, you know, raise his finger into the air and then pretty much use red. Now, once he used red, he would... Uh, send it towards uh, Itachi and this would take off Itachi's head now Itachi would then pretty much disappear into um, Crows and he would reappear, you know Like right, right next to Naruto Naruto would then turn around You know send the kick and this would send Itachi flying but not like too far He like he would have his guard up so it'd only be like sent sliding against the floor now about a few seconds later, Jiraiya would come along and then Kisame would recover and pretty much, uh, you know, Jiraiya would use his toth, uh, toth, toad mouth trap jutsu, I guess you could say toad mouth jutsu, and pretty much uh, Itachi would escape the same way, like Itachi and Kisame would escape the same way. Now Sasuke would not be there since, number one, he's not really fearful of Naruto getting destroyed by Itachi. He knows from the start that Naruto is stronger than Itachi, so he probably, you know, would um, basically not interfere. And then another thing is Naruto promised uh, Sasuke that he'll help him. So pretty much it's kind of like a deal. So, you know, Sasuke wasn't there. So after they dealt with those um, that in little interruption, Naruto and Jiraiya would continue on their journey. Now, pretty much once uh, they would you know head to the village, the same town where uh, Tsunade is in, they would basically they would be um, like pretty tired and exhausted from walking all that time, and Naruto would be quite bored. So he would run around the town getting sweets until he would find himself upon a bar. And he would call Jiraiya and tell him to come over here so they can get a few drinks. And they would walk in, you know, expecting to get drinks, but they would pretty much see Tsunade. Now, once they would see Tsunade, they would sit down and pretty much they would start drinking. <laughs> like, it is what it is. So, uh, like, Naruto stopped, you know, basically, they would, like, hang out. And pretty much Jiraiya would get on the topic about her coming back to the village and being Hokage. Now, basically, um... You know, Tsunade would say no. I don't really. You know, not. It would pretty much be the same. But since Orochimaru is sealed away and stuff, she, like she would be more prone to be, uh, yeah. What's the word? Convinced and persuaded. So like Jiraiya, like first she would say no. Then Naruto would use his <coughs> persuasive techniques to um, convince her to come back to the village and be the fifth Okage, which would go quite, you know pretty well like bro naruto is a reincarnation of gojo and we all seen gojo bro like there's no saying no so like they would finish um you know doing that by the end of the night they would head back to the hidden leaf village and once they would get to the leaf village uh like the next morning naruto would wake up and you know, he'd be pretty pretty tired he he had a hangover no lie so i'm just kidding naruto is only 16 calm down guys i'm not that crazy so pretty much Naruto would get up and he would um, you know, he would start to think you know, this, this village is kind of getting boring. So pretty much he would um, like head back, not head back, like walk towards Sasuke's house. Now once he would get to Sasuke's house, uh, he would pretty much knock on the door and Sasuke would kind of already be ready for something. And Naruto would say, you know, are you ready? And pretty much Sasuke would say, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. And then, you know, Naruto would pretty much, um, like, walk and, like, do, like, the follow me hand sign. And they would be at the village gates. Now, what would happen is Naruto and Sasuke would dip out of the village for the next three years. Now, what would happen is they would pretty much head towards uh, just, like, a random place where nobody is. Like, a deserted um, land. Like, it was just, like, a few houses a training ground or just some small place where it's deserted so they would pretty much spend the next three years training sasuke would train with his sharing gun he would attain the monkekyo which is not hard it's pretty easy 
uh, Naruto would pretty much master all of his limitless techniques, master domain expansion, and just any little curse techniques he could learn. Now, so Naruto would be 19, everyone else in the Konoha 12 would be 19. So Naruto would pretty much um, head back to the village and uh, pretty much he would, you know, get back, meet up with Tsunade and Tsunade would tell uh, her, tell him that, uh, you know, the Gara, uh, Gara of the Sand was kidnapped. Since it kind of came a little bit later than usual, since our, like, Naruto is kind of slow. So when they came back, the SOS would have came from the Sand Village and pretty much Naruto and Sasuke would have been on their way out as soon as they came in. So they'd be on their way to the Sand Village and once they would pretty much get there, um, like to that area, not you know, Itachi and Kisame would be waiting. So they would head right to the Sand Village and once they would get there, they would see Sasori and Daedora like flying away with Gara. Now Naruto would tell Sasuke to use that move they trained and pretty much Sasuke would then go like use his full body Susano and he would uh, form an arrow before shooting it taking out the bird so the, the arrow is infused with lightning chakra if you guys are wondering why the hell does he have the susano number one naruto has reverse curse technique now this can heal people as yuta and sukuna used it now sasuke would have overused the strong gun his mangekyo a lot but since since uh, naruto has reverse curse technique he can heal sasuke's highs and he can has kurama as well so yeah that's kind of op when it comes to the healing factor of course so the bird would get like shot right through it would get nullified and it would start going down so naruto would be there like waiting once they like landed and pretty much naruto would like appear behind them punch them and like he would punch the story right through the door right through the doll through his like heart his puppet heart it just would have been easy work for him then he would look towards uh, uh, Daedra before, uh, you know, basically spin kicking him and basically taking his head off. Now, he would then go through Sasori's things and he would find the map of, you know, the Katsuki base. He would start to go through the notes of Sasori and it would pretty much Sasori. And it would pretty much go over the defenses, the weaknesses of the base. And it, was, like, it would have been easy for them to infiltrate the base. Now Naruto and Sasuke would head towards that general direction and once they would get to the base they'd pretty much like bust in and not bust in they were obviously stealthy so they would be climbing over the walls and they would see basically the six paths of pain now they would try to walk around them but the path of pain would just kind of like leave the room now the then like another two people would come would be Kakazu and Hidon. Now Naruto remembered them from uh, Sasori's notes and they would say like he's immortal. So the only way he's taking them out is with purple. So Naruto would pretty much silently use purple and charge it up before shooting it straight through um, Kakazu and Hidon, basically erasing their bodies from existence. They would then go to the other uh, hallway and pretty much they would see like Kisame and Itachi. Now. Itachi is not as stupid as Kakazu and Hidon. I mean, I'm not stupid. It's just like he's always aware. So, uh, like he, you know, Itachi would tell Kisame like to leave the room, and pretty much Itachi would, uh, tell you know, tell Naruto and Sasuke to come out the shadows, and pretty much that that's exactly what happened. So, Naruto and Kakashi, you know, why do I keep saying Kakashi when I met Itachi? Itachi will have like the small conversation I, i'm not going to tell you what happened but for the next maybe two hours this would occur now nobody noticed the dead bodies of kakuzu and hiran since they were erased from existence there's nothing really to trace so if you guys are wondering what the hell happened that time well pretty much uh itachi kind of like willingly died i guess you can say and pretty much gave up his uh, eyes so yeah uh, Sasuke would have gotten the EMS and with Naruto's healing factor you would have basically um, helped him now if you guys are wondering why is Itachi dying so fast um, number one it's just like uh, I, it would be a little bit disrespectful if Naruto would have just wiped the floor with him it just wouldn't have been a good ending so basically after Sasuke would get his EMS it'd be quite you know um, quick so Basically, Naruto would seal Itachi's body into a scroll, and they would keep going. 
Now, they would see the six paths of pain, and Sasuke would pretty much tap his shoulder, telling him, you know, he can deal with this. So he would then pretty much use Inferno style. He would like get a like uh, make an arrow out of it, and he would shoot it, and this would pretty much burn the six paths of pain to crisp. They would run through the hallway, and they would make it to uh, Nagato and Konan. Now, once they would make it there, they would also see Obito there as well. So Naruto had said he'll deal with Obito, and you know uh, Sasuke can deal with Nagato and Konan. So Naruto would appear, and he would pretty much. Um, use his domain expansion to get in there with the two seconds he has he would then run over there grab conan and rip her head off before going over to obito grabbing his head before he can phase and he would also like snap his neck you know how they do it in the movies or in the show in the shows and then sasuke would have used amaterasu on nagato and then he'd pretty much rip out the running gun and pretty much keep it to himself i guess you can say so yeah like he would have just sealed into a scroll, but he, that's just his future plans, of course. Renegon is OP, but they don't know what the Renegon does at that point, so yeah. So after this, they would have pretty much taken out all of the Akatsuki, and they would head back to the Leaf Village, and they would report it to Tsunade that the Akatsuki is now done, and pretty much Tsunade would reward them with the, um, like the award from like the war hero award like w awards that war heroes get after war kind of something similar to that but without a war but you know, you know what i mean so yeah after all the akatsuki is pretty much taken down sasuke would have pretty much gotten the sun and moon seals since naruto really isn't the reincarnation of ashura now and you know he would have kind of became the pseudo version of the six paths of like the uh, sage's six paths since he has Hagoroma's chakra like fully has all of Hagoroma's chakra and Naruto would have just been Naruto OP as fuck So yeah, this will actually be the end of this series and pretty much the end of this what if so yeah, but without further ado guys um, Peace out I guess